hey guys i hope that i'm live right now if you guys are able to listen to me properly as well as there's no issues with the audio or the video please do let me know guys hello everyone i hope that i'm live right now if you guys are able to listen to me properly as well as there's no issues with the audio or the video please do let me know okay great now i'll just open up the live chat on my phone as well so that i'm able to listen to you guys properly as well so give me a second so how are you guys are you guys all fine please let me know how are you guys are you guys all fine all fine that's great amazing amazing okay so uh, in today's class we'll again start off with python itself we'll try to finish up as much as possible in python today uh, can somebody remind me what we have learned yesterday please let me know guys can somebody remind me what we have learned yesterday please let me know i'm also great i'm also great thank you so much so can somebody remind me what we have done yesterday so boolean float great we have learned about integers floats boolean logical operators comparison operators amazing guys amazing operators boolean okay boolean was the last topic uh great so we have learned up till boolean uh, algebra uh, till yesterday so we'll start off with uh, from there itself we'll just wait for 2 to 3 minutes so that uh, if anybody is late he or she is able to join for the camp as well uh, up to that point of time do you guys have any questions or queries please let me know Do you guys have any questions or queries? Please do let me know, guys. We stop with Boolean, okay? Up to the point of time, we are starting off with the class. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. okay did you guys uh, receive the information about the boot camp about today's class on your whatsapp groups please let me know guys did you guys receive the information about today's class on your whatsapp groups please let me know guys okay so because uh till now not a lot of you have joined up for today's class so i was a bit concerned whether the permission has been passed on to you or not so i'm just waiting for that <clears throat> so let's continue off with the same itself okay so let's get started out is everything else which is not required okay so we'll be again continuing off with our python notebook itself okay and uh, then we'll move further on with the same so shall we start guys please let me know shall we start please let me know guys Excuse me. Shall we start, guys? Please let me know, guys. Great. So let's continue with the same as well. Okay. Okay. 
so we have covered up till uh, boolean values today we'll be starting out with strings okay so today we'll be starting out with strings itself Python has another data type in its toolkit called as strings. We have already learned about uh, floats. We have learned about integers. We have learned about boolean. Now the next one is strings. So whenever you are writing hello world, anything in between uh, inverted co quotation marks that is considered as a string in Python. Okay. Let me just uh, switch on the slow mode. Otherwise the entire live chat will be spammed. I'm so sorry. Okay. So Python has another data type in its toolkit called as strings. Okay. As the name suggests, this data type deals with characters, words, and text. Strings are an immutable order of sequence of characters. Okay. So let us look at that. Okay. Let's let's try to understand this. So what are strings? Okay, we have already used strings previously as well. One of the places where we have used string is our hello world. Okay is our hello world so right over there you were able to see that when we were writing hello world this is our string anything in between double quotation marks or single quotation marks itself is called as a string it can contain capital small a to small z capital a to capital z it can contain any type of special characters it can contain uh, numbers okay it can contain spaces anything okay so that is the entire thing that can go inside your strings itself. Right over here, as you're able to see that we can create a string using double quotes as well as single quotation marks as well. So I'm running this particular line of code. You are able to see that both of them are resulting me with the same answer. Both of them are resulting me with the same answer right over here. In this example, we printed the word shape AI using single and double quotation marks. We're able to see double quotation marks and single quotation marks. Okay. We can assign a string to a variable just like in float and int. Okay. So you can just create a particular instructor a string right over here. You can create a particular string right over here and you can assign it to a variable as well. You can assign it to a variable as well. So right over here, as you're able to see, you will be able to print moto. In the description okay you will be able to print moto in your description okay you can contain spaces you can contain uh letters you can contain numbers it can contain special characters it can contain anything inside of it okay you can contain anything inside of it so that is how you can create a string okay that is how you create a string in python are you guys able to understand this please let me know are you guys able to understand this please let me know guys Give me a second. I think so there should be no buffering from right now. Okay, so you guys can focus upon the learning itself. Okay, so that is how you can create a string in Python. Okay, strings in Python show the variable type of str or it's the short form for string. Okay, so right over here you are having type moto. Okay, type moto. So you are seeing the data type of moto. So moto we have created right over here that is a string. So as I'm running this little line of code, you are able to see that the type of moto is str. Okay. String can contain any character, number, space uh, within the quotes. However, if you want to have quotes inside the string, we get an error. Okay. So right over here, when you're having this particular dialogue, okay, so this is a string. Okay. As you're able to see, this is a string, but I want to put, okay. Uh, quotations inside that string as well. I want to put quotation marks inside that string as well. 
for that particular condition this is not working okay what is happening is when you are defining a string okay when you are defining a string you start off with a particular quotation mark right over here we have used double quotation marks so this python is looking for another double quotation mark python is looking for another double quotation mark to end the string okay python is looking for another double quotation mark to end the string guys if it is uh, by buffering it will be buffering for a second itself not more than that i guess you guys are able to understand this am i right i am also able to put up the entire thing live right over here in front of me it will be buffering for just a second so you can uh, wait for the same okay okay so whenever you are creating a particular string okay, you start off with a particular double quotation mark or a single quotation mark so that python is basically trying to find another double quotation mark another single another double quotation mark to end this string as well okay to end this string as well so perform right over here as you're able to see it will just scan through the text and is able to see another double quotation mark right over here it's able to see another double quotation mark right over here and this is where like it will end the string okay according to python the highlighted portion is the string itself the highlighted portion is the string itself the rest of the stuff is something gibberish the rest of this stuff is something gibberish this is gibberish python is not able to understand what this is and again it is able to identify one more double quotation mark which start off with a string and it finds that it is a double quotation mark so this is an empty string that it is able to identify so for python this is a string and this is an empty string right over here as well okay you need to decide whether it is buffering or not from my end it's not buffering okay it will buffer for just a second So you see from my end it's all perfect there's no issues from my end okay if it's buffering it's from your end itself so please try to figure out what is happening okay see this is very distracting i need to teach right over here i cannot keep on looking for questions in the live chat and just finding just two words certain buffering not buffering buffering not buffering it is very distracting for me i need to teach as well okay okay so right over here as you're able to see so python is trying to find another double quotation mark to end the string and as soon as it is finding another double quotation mark according to python this is the only string that is present right over here okay the rest is gibberish and then you are having another double quotation mark right over here that is an empty string okay so right over here if i am running this particular line of code you will be able to see an error because python does not know what this particular entire thing is so if you want to use if you want to use quotations inside of quotations themselves okay if you want to use quotations inside of quotations then in that particular case what you have to do is there are two methods which python provides to handle such a problem where you want to use quotes inside of a string okay in that particular case python provides you two different solutions for the same uh, the first particular solution is that place the string in single quotations for example if you want to use double quotations inside your string then make the string in single quotations themselves so if you are starting the string with a single quotation right now python is looking forward to a single quotation mark python wants to find a single quotation mark right over here 
so it will scan through the code it ends up as a double quotation mark but this is not single quotation to end this string python needs a single quotation mark so it will again move further from right over here up till and unless it finds another single quotation mark so this is the entire string that python will consider as a string itself this entire line of code will be considered by python as a string itself so this would work properly there will be no problem there will be no problem whatsoever okay similarly the next solution that python provides is of an escape character the next pro solution that python provides is of an escape character so in for example if you are having a particular uh you are creating the string in a single quotation mark itself and you want to contain both double quotations as well as single quotations inside the string okay you want to contain double quotations as well as single quotations inside your string in that particular case for example you are starting off with a single quotation now python is trying to find another single quotation mark to end the string okay python is trying to find another single quotation mark to end the string so it will move further from right over here and as soon as it is re reaching a single quotation mark you are putting an escape character right over here that is a backslash okay backslash is called as an escape character okay backslash is called as an escape character right over here so you need to use a backslash which is basically telling okay which is basically telling python that the next character that is the single inverted of the single quotation mark is not a special it does not have any special value inside of python okay it does not have any special value it is not the ending of the string it does not have any special value associated with it that is what python by the backslash is telling python okay so we are not having a backslash right over here so python will just end at the single quotation mark thinking that this is where the string ends okay python will reach the single quotation mark and think that this is where the string ends so what you're doing is you're putting up a escape character that is a backslash okay this is an escape character that is the backslash right over here when you're putting up a backslash right over here so basically it tells python basically it tells python that the next character that is the single quotation mark is not the end of the string it does not have any special meaning to it okay now the backslash won't be coming into your string itself backslash is a special character that is used to skip the next character to skip the next character that this does not has any value move on to the next character itself so when you will be running this particular line of code you will be able to see that the backslash isn't there but a single quotation is still there inside the quotes itself okay you still have the single quote inside the string but the backslash isn't there because the backslash is basically telling python that the single quote does not has any value associated with it it does not has any meaning associated with it are you guys able to understand please let me know guys Are you guys able to understand backslash? Please let me know, guys. Great. So let's move on to the next part. Now, when you are having strings, okay, you can use the arithmetic operator. Okay, this is the arithmetic operator that is used to add two in, uh, integers together, two floats together. Okay, so you can use this particular application to concatenate two strings together as well. You can use this particular uh, symbol to this is called as concatenation symbol. You can use that to basically append or attach or concatenate two strings together as well so if i am running this particular line of code you are easily able to see that we are able to concatenate hello world and hello then space and then world into a single string okay this is called as the concatenation property of strings okay this is called as the concatenation property of strings okay here in this example you can see that using the plus arithmetic operator we are able to write hello world together okay <coughs> so this is called as concatenation itself okay concatenation 
After backslash, no space needs to be given. Okay. Okay. So now, what is multiplication? Can somebody let me know what is multiplication? Multiplication is nothing else but addition. So similarly, if you multiply a word by five, okay, what you are basically trying to say is you want to add that word to e e to each other five times. So you want to have hello plus hello plus hello plus hello plus hello five times. So that will give you a concatenation of five hellos together. So if you are running this particular line of code, you are easily able to see that you are getting five hellos together. That is as rightly said by Naveen, it is string replication. Okay, this is string replication. So it is basically repeating hello five times. You can use addition and multiplication on strings, but you cannot use subtraction or division on strings. Okay. You can use addition and multiplication on strings, but you cannot use subtraction or division on strings, guys. So please do remember that. So for example, right over here, if I'm trying to divide two strings together, then it is giving me an error right over here that unsupported operand types for division, string and string. That is, you cannot divide a string with a string itself. Similarly, if I'm doing minus substance subtraction, that will also not work. Okay, that will also give you an error right over here. Okay. Another built-in function that you guys need to remember is the length function. Okay, that is gives you the length of the string itself. Now, what is a string? A string is a series of characters. Okay. A string is a series of characters. So when you're using the len function, okay, that is the full form is length, L-E-N-G-T-H. Okay. So that gives you the length, that is the number of characters in the particular string. Right over here, S-H-A-P-E-A-I. That is seven characters long. Okay. S-H-A-P-E-A-I. That is seven characters long. So if I'm running this particular line of code, you are able to see that we are getting seven printed out on our screen. Okay, we are getting seven printed out on our screen. Similarly, if I have having shape space AI, if I'm having shape space AI, I'm trying to run this particular line of code, that will give me the answer as eight. Even the space is considered as a character itself. Even the space is considered as a character itself. Okay, are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know, guys. Great. Amazing, guys. Amazing. So let's recap uh, the type and type conversion that we have seen up till now. Okay. So right over here, we can write the same number that is 75 into various different uh, data types as well so 75 as an integer 75 as a float 75 as a string okay and you can check the type of each of these objects in python as int float string and bool okay so that is the, how you use type so we have already learned about it this was just a quick revision now we need to learn about type conversion as well Okay, so for example, we have already seen some of the type conversions. For example, we want to convert three, that is an integer, to a float. So what will be the answer, guys? We want to convert three, that is an integer, to a float. What will be the answer? Please let me know, guys. We want to convert three, that is an integer, to a float. What will be the answer, guys? Three point zero. So we have already learned about it in the previous classes as well. So converting an in integer to a float, we just need to append point zero at the end. So the answer would be three point zero. And now the decibel is a float data type itself. Okay. Right over here, we are having a particular uh, string. Okay. We want to append. We want to create a particular string right over here. Okay. Now the problem is that marks. Okay. Marks is an integer. Okay, marks is an integer right over here. Subject is coding, that is a string. Okay, semester is first, that is also a string. Now, please remember, you cannot concatenate, you cannot perform addition or concatenation between a string and an integer. For example, if I'm just commenting these two lines of code, if I want to create, so print subject, that is a string, plus marks that will give me an error okay why will that give me an error guys 
because you can only concatenate str that is string to a string you cannot concatenate integer to a string okay you cannot concatenate an integer to a string so to concatenate an integer to a string you first need to convert that integer to a string itself you need to convert a that integer to a string itself okay so for that what you want to do is you first need to put up brackets and then str okay that will convert your integer to a string just like we were converting your uh, integer to float and float to integer similarly if you want to provide concatenation you cannot do a concatenation on an integer with a string you need to do concatenation with a string and a string itself okay so right over here you want to do concatenation uh, for a integer so you want to convert that integer first to a string okay so it's as simple as putting up a brackets marks putting up str in front of it now when i'm running it i won't get an error i will get coding 15 okay that basically converts my integer to a string now i can print my results out okay right you are able to see right over here so i scored str marks in subject during my semester semester the subject and semester are already strings okay semester and subjects are already string box is an integer so we are going to commit okay then we are going to convert this to str or string right over here so now we will get i scored 15 in coding during my first semester okay are you guys able to understand this please let me do we are able to print a integer but we cannot concatenate a string with an integer right now this is not printing we are trying to concatenate a string with an integer we are not printing it out we are concatenating it a string and an integer that is not possible we need to convert that integer to a string and then concatenate two strings together are you guys able to understand this please let me know guys are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know. Great. Amazing, guys. Amazing. So this is also something. So what will happen if I try to convert? So we have already seen that. So I don't think so. This is necessary for us. So we are just converting it to... to uh, we are checking it. So we are also able to convert a string that is 15 to a float as well that you are able to see. So let me just print marks for you. Okay, so as you are able to see, we can even convert a string. Okay, we can even convert a string of a number to a float or an integer as well. We can convert a string or a number to a float or an integer as well. Okay. Great. So that is as simple as that right over here. You are having a string. Okay. You have to convert it into a float. So you just need to put marks and then convert it into float. Okay. So you are able to convert it. So this is basically how you are able to convert into float, float to end, integer to string, float to string. Similarly, you can convert a string back to integer as well. Okay. As simple as that. Okay. So one more important method that you need to know about is the format method. Okay. So whenever you want to have like an integer that you want to insert inside a string, uh, you want to create a very huge string using the variables that you have, you have to use this concatenation property. Okay. You have to use this entire concatenation property right over there. You want to have string, then I concatenate with a particular integer. So you have to convert it into a string, then concatenate it and so on and so forth. So this is a very lengthy. Okay. This is a very lengthy uh, piece of code you want to keep it as short and as easy as possible as well so for that you have another method called as the format method this is very important guys this is very important guys okay basically instead of doing all that instead of doing all that concatenation converting an integer to a string and all that format handles that for you format does it automatically for you for example right over here i'm having a string okay that is mohammed has dash number of balloons okay mohammed has dash number of balloons if i want to like put 27 inside of it then what i had to do previously was i had to do 
okay i have to write something like this mohammed has then copy control v then i have to put up a, a quotation mark then again uh, plus then i have to do as 27 is an integer so str uh, then 27 okay so that we are able to convert it into an in a string itself so that we are able to concatenate it then again space and then balloons okay, so this is how you would have to write it out individually but we don't have that much time we don't want to complicate things more than that so that is the reason why we have format right over here we are having format right over here so we are easily able to see that we are having a string okay we are having a string right over here we can directly include we can directly put 27 right over there so the uh, curly brackets that you are able to see right over here format will just replace the curly brackets with the value that is present inside of format so it will replace this curly brackets with 27 and you don't even have to convert 27 to a string it will format will do that for you automatically format will do that for you automatically so format will just replace the curly brackets for you with the value that is present inside format so as you are able to see we'll get the answer as muhammad has 27 balloons okay muhammad has 27 balloons format basically replaces the curly brackets with the value that is present inside of format okay are you guys able to understand this please let me know Guys, are you able to understand this? Please let me know, guys. Okay. So, similarly, if you want to include like multiple variables inside the string, you want to put multiple variables inside the string. For example, right over here, animal is dog. Okay. Action is bite. Okay. You want, so what you have to do is does your, then you are having two fill in the blanks, two curly brackets. Each of these curly brackets will be replaced by the value, respective value that is present inside format. The first curly brackets will be replaced by animal that is dog. And the second curly bracket will be replaced by action that is your bite. So you'll get the answer as does your dog bite okay then of course you can even like replace this string with a particular variable what is a variable variable basically contains that value that string inside of it so you can of course do that so there is like this is basically understandable itself okay this, there's nothing new to it you are basically just using variables instead of strings okay directly okay are you guys able to understand this please if you do so maybe we are not learning about stack overflow right now whatever we are learning focus upon that okay okay great are you guys able to understand format please let me know guys are you guys able to understand format please let me know Yes, you can directly write in format as well as you are able to see we have directly write it right over here. But that is totally up to you. I have just shown you the different possibilities that you have at the end of the day. Okay. Okay. Now the next is lists and membership operators. So we will start off with data structures right now. Up till now we have learned about data types. Okay, we have learned about integers, floats, strings, boolean, all these data types that we have seen up till now. But you need to understand that all these data types are basically objects. These are basically different objects that are present. You need a bucket, a container, uh, and place where you are able to organize and carry these uh, objects as well okay you need a place where you are able to organize and carry these objects as well that is where data structures come into place okay one of the majorly used data structures is lists so data structures are like buckets okay that are used to carry these different data types together okay so data structures are containers that organize and group data types together in different ways okay the data structures are containers that organize and group data together into different ways okay you can take up as many value as possible in format there's no limit uh we are going to start off with lists themselves okay lists are one of the most common and basic data structures in python 
okay it is a mutable ordered sequence of elements we'll be trying to understand what is a mutable ordered sequence of elements okay not right now because you won't be able to understand it we'll be moving further slowly and steadily once we have understood lists and how it is similar to strings okay then we'll try to understand what is a mutable ordered sequence of elements so we will be doing it but not right now because you won't be able to understand it as of this particular point of time okay so lists are one of the most important and the most basic data structures in python that you need to understand okay Are you guys able to understand up till here? Please let me know, guys. When I will take the attendance, I've already told you guys on the first day that I will take the attendance anywhere in the class for just one second. So those who have not attended the first day will not be able to understand where and how the attendance will be taken. Okay. great so this is an example of a list okay as you're able to see this is how you create a list a list is a collection of different data types together okay so right over here you are having a list of students okay we have named this particular list as students s-t-u-d-e-n-t-s students that's the name of the list then you are having the, a particular uh, rectangular brackets okay you are having rectangular brackets right over here and inside of the rectangular brackets you have the items that you want to put inside a list so whenever you are going for grocery shopping you are creating a list at the end of the day a list is an item okay you are having various items that you are grouping together similarly this is a list of python in which you are creating a list of strings right over here okay you are creating a list of strings right over here yes lists are very similar to arrays that anybody has already uh, seen it okay so you need to understand that it is similar to arrays okay Guys, able to understand up till here, please let me know, guys. Okay, so right over here, how to create a list? You are having your rectangular brackets. Inside of that, you are having your items. Okay, Sam, Pam, Rocky, Austin, Steve, Banner, that have been separated by commas. Okay, so if I'm running this particular line of code, I'm creating a list of strings called as students right over here. Now lists are ordered in nature like we have already learned lists are ordered in nature. So what do you mean by ordered? Okay, that is we can look up. So whenever you are having whenever you visit any good society, okay, you will be able to see that each of the buildings. So you are having a very long road and there are a lot of houses on the road itself. Okay, let me just show it to you guys. So you will have a particular place like this okay you will have it a particular road like this and you are having different houses on top of this particular road okay now each of these houses will have a number associated with them so this is the house zero this house one this house two this house three this house four this house five and this is how you are able to identify this is how you are able to identify that okay these are the divs. okay so i want to go to house four i want to go to house one so you are able to identify houses using these house numbers similarly in a list as well when you are creating a list like this you are having different elements okay you are having different elements and each of these elements are having an index okay that is an address each of these elements are having an index or an address for example for the students uh, element you are having Sam, Pam, Rocky, Austin, Steve, banner okay so you are having all these elements okay all this list items inside your list and each of these items have their very own index as well so sam has an index of zero pam has an index of one uh, rocky has an index of two austin has an index of three steve has an index of four uh, bruce has an index of five and so on and so forth so 
each of these elements can now be accessed each of these elements can now be accessed using their addresses or their indexes each of these elements can be accessed using their addresses or their index okay so for example right over here if you want to access sam so you will be writing so this is the students array so in python you don't have arrays that is basically called as lists in python that's the difference okay in other languages you call this as arrays in python you call it as list okay okay great so if you want to access rocky okay so you'll be writing students is the name of the list itself and you want to get access to the index 2 that is rocky okay that you want to get access to rocky itself so student 2 so you want to get access to student 2 so this is how you get access to rocky okay this is how you get access to rocky right over here okay so this is why it is called it's ordered in nature okay because there is an order you can use this order to get access to the elements okay you can get uh or this or you can use this order to get access to these elements itself okay Right over here as well, if I'm trying to access student 0, it will give me an access to Sam that is present as 0 itself. If I'm trying to access students 1, it will give me an access to Pam that is present as the first index. Students 2 will give me the access of Rocky. Now try to understand that in Python, you count the indexes starting from 0. Okay, so it's 0, 1, 2, 3. Why is that the case? Because Python is a 0th indexed uh, language. Okay, Python is a zeroth index language. Most of the languages that you will be learning is a zeroth index language itself. So I'm running this particular line of code, you are able to see that Sam, Pam, and Rocky being printed on our screen. Okay, Sam, Pam, and Rocky being printed on our screen. Sakib, you will not be able to understand the use of list till the last day because we will when we'll be doing the project we will be using lists to store items you need to store something somewhere so you have lists where you are able to store something why do you have a list in your daily life to store items that's the same reason why you have lists and by then as well as simple as that okay Okay, now you are having these indexes. There are negative indexes also possible. So it is like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The same numbers can be even represented as, so if this was 0, then minus 1 would be behind. So that will be minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, and minus 6. So you are having negative indexes as well right over here. Okay, you are having negative indexes as well right over here. So... It ranges from 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to minus 5, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6. So right over here, that means that minus 1 and 5 both represent Bruce. Okay. Minus 2 and 4 both represent Steve. Minus 3 and 3 both represent Austin. Minus 4 and 2 both represent Rocky. Minus 5 and 1 both represent Pam. Minus 6 and 0 both represent Sam. And now please don't ask where there is minus 0. Okay. There's nothing like minus 0 or plus 0. It's just 0. So your indexes range from minus 6 to plus 5 okay that is the range of the indexes themselves there is nothing like 6 there's nothing like minus 7 okay there's nothing like 6 there's nothing like minus 7 okay okay it ranges from minus 6 to plus 5 itself okay so right over here if i'm going back i'm trying to write students minus one so what will be printed guys students minus one what will be printed please let me know students minus one what would be printed guys banner that's absolutely correct we'll be getting minus one that is banner that is the last item so we'll get banner steve and austin printed as our output banner steve and austin printed out as our output right over here okay as simple as that
so if you try to access something like uh, students 20 you know that 20 does not exist index or address 20 does not exist so trying to access something like that you will get an error saying that index error list index out of range okay that is this is this 20 does not exist index 20 does not exist are you guys able to understand this please let me know you guys able to understand this please let me know guys Okay, great. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so let's continue from right over here. Next, we need to understand about slice operations as well. Okay, we need to understand about slice operations. Now, sometimes you have a list, okay, you have a huge list. You might want to take out some particular part of that list itself, okay? You want to take out some particular part of that list itself for that you are having your slice operations okay you're having your slice operations okay so let's look at that so let's try to understand slice so we are having an array let's say a b c d e f g so this is our uh, array that we are having as of this particular moment now what does slice mean so this array is called as let's say a letter okay l e t t e r that is the name of this particular letter uh, array okay now if i want to get just b c okay if, if i want to get just b c from the entire list i don't want the entire list i just want a small list out of this called as b c right over here so for that i'm having the slice operations let's first list the indexes for all these different elements okay so you are having zero one two three four five and six right over here see these are the indexes now what does slice do okay you need to specify from where you want to slice off this particular list from where and up till where okay from where do you want to get the part of the list okay from where do you want to start okay and till where do you want to go you will not be including this this index won't be included this will be included this won't be included okay so from where do you want to start and up till where do you want to go so right over here i want to start from one and i want to go up till three i don't want to include three i want to go up till three i just want to get one and two i want to start from one i want to start from one and i want to go up till three okay i have to start from one and i want to go up till three i don't want to include three okay so i will be writing letter and then i want to start at one and then i want to go up till three so this will give me a small list a small list having b and c inside of it. it will give me a small list having b and c inside of it okay are you guys able to understand this please let me know Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know, guys. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know. It is as simple as that. I want to get only B and C. That is 1 and 2. And this number would be where I want to start. And up till where. I don't want to include this. Up till where I want to go. Okay. So that is I want to start at 1. And I want to go up till 3. I don't want to include 3. So I'll get B and C as my answer. Now if you want to start from the Edmo starting itself. If you want to start from 0. Okay. Then there is no need to just write 0 as well. Okay, so you will write like, for example, I want to get from A, 
okay i want to get from a to e i want to get from a to e i want to get this entire thing okay i want to get a 0 1 2 3 4 so what will be the slicing for the same guys we want to get 0 1 2 3 4 what will be the slicing for that guys can somebody let me know what will be the slicing for that guys can somebody let me know if i want to start from 0 and go till 4 that is 0 1 2 3 4 4 what will be slicing guys can somebody let me know Okay, that will be zero and five. You want to start from zero. Okay, you want to start from zero, and you want to go up till five. You don't want to include five. You want to go up till five. So you will be writing letter zero, and then you will have this colon, and then five right over here. Now the zero as all the uh, lists will start always from zero. So this can be omitted as well. You can write this as letter. And then nothing colon five, okay? Nothing colon five. You you don't have to write zero implicitly because Python will already understand that if you are not writing anything, you want to take it from the start itself. You want to take it from the start itself. Now, if you want to go up till the very end, you want to start from three. You want to start from three and go up till the very end. In that particular case, you will think that okay, we'll be writing letter. One colon seven, sorry, uh, three co colon seven. Okay, you will think that I will write this. I want to start from three. I want to start from three. I want to go up till the very end. Okay, I want to go up till the very end. So you will think that you will write letter three colon seven. But this is also written as letter three colon nothing because Python understands that you want to go up till the very end of the list itself. Okay, you don't write anything. Right over there. So you are right. Just letter three colon nothing. So that will take you to the very end of the list itself. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know. <coughs> are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know, guys. This will include D, E, F, and G. Everything. This will include D, E, F, and G. Everything. Okay. Okay. Great. So let's look at this from the perspective of code. Okay. So you are having a particular list called as students. <coughs> the name of the list is plural, as you are able to see. The name of the list is. Plural right over here, and then you are having another string called as student. Okay, you are having a string called as student right over here. To slice a particular range, you are able to use like four to seven, and the same you can use on a string as well. Okay, in a string as well, when you are having a string such as short. So this is a string right over here. So it also follows the same indexing principle as well. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, here the character is at that particular index. So if I'm having name, if I'm name is equals to short. If I'm having name is equals to short right over here, so I can get access to H. So name and then one that will give me the access to H that is the character at the index one. Similarly, I can perform uh, slicing operations just like lists on strings as well. If I'm having name one colon three, then I will get H A right over here. Okay, I will get H A as my output. That is one two three. That is one and two that i am going to get okay because three wouldn't be included so we are following the same principles of list of uh, order as well as of slicing notations inside strings as well 
okay inside strings as well are you guys able to understand this please let me know are you guys able to understand this guys please let me know guys If you are having a sentence as well, that does not mean anything. Okay, it's just a space. Okay, so space will be counted as the seventh index. Then we have Shaurya is so eight nine. Then space, uh, good. Okay, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So it does not matter if you are having a sentence or a word. You still have to count each of these characters up. So it will work in the exact same way. Okay, <clears throat> great. Right over here, as you are able to see, we are having Marvel students four to seven, and then Flash students one to three. So I'm running this particular line of code. I'm able to see if Steve Banner and Tony as our output, and A R that is coming from Barry. So A R that is one and two because we want to go up till three. So one and two that is A and R as our output right over here. Okay. Again, slicing from the very end. So you have, if you want to go start from seven and go up till the very end, then you just don't have to write anything after the colon. So you will get the answer as Bruce, Henry, Clark, and Diana. And you're able to see Bruce, Henry, Clark, and Diana right over here. Okay. And say if you want to start from the beginning, this is also something that we have like. Talked about so Sam, Pam, Rocky, Austin. That is from the beginning itself, and Bar, B A R. That is also from the beginning itself. So we have learned about all these different things from the examples. Okay. Okay. So we have already seen about the len function on strings that basically returns the number of characters in a particular string. You can use the same len function on a list as well. You can use the same len function on a list as well. When you are using the len function on a list, it will return back to you the number of items present in that particular list. Okay, we are using the len function on a list. So students, okay. Students are a list itself, right? You are over here. Students are a list. So the len function on a list itself will return the number of items present in that particular list. So Sam, Pam, Oroki, Austin. So this will be counted. So we are having eleven items present inside of this particular list. For a string, the len function will retain the number of characters present in that particular list. Okay, number of characters, the number of letters present in that particular list itself. Okay, right over here, if I am running this particular line of code, you will be able to see that for len students, that is the list, we are getting eleven as our answer, and for Barry, that is our student, that is a string, we are getting five as our answer. Okay. Are you guys able to understand up till here? Please let me know. Okay, so what we are going to do from tomorrow onwards is, guys, that I will be telling you one or two stuff more of Python. In the start, it will take fifteen minutes. That's it. Then we'll immediately start with NumPy and Pandas. Okay, we'll immediately start with NumPy and Pandas. Any topics, for example, tuples or dictionaries, is coming up while we are learning about NumPy, Pandas, or the project. I will let you guys know about that at that point of time itself, so that we are able to pace up our speed. Because right now we are going on a very slow speed, and this won't do. Okay, we need to pace up as well. From tomorrow, in the first fifteen minutes, we'll be completing Python as much as required. Okay, then we'll be starting off with pandas and numpy. Okay, anything that is coming that we have not learned, we'll learn it at that point of time itself. Okay, so right now I'm showing you the attendance link. The attendance link is on my screen right now. You can take a screenshot for that. Okay, so again, this is a YouTube video. You can scroll back. You can watch it again. All those kind of stuff. I will remind you guys again that please like the video. It's really very important that you are liking the video itself, guys, so that uh, in the future as well we are able to conduct the boot camps in association with different companies and provide you better certificates as well. So please uh, do like the video, guys. It's really very important for you guys as well as for us, for both of us at the end of the day. So please do like the video, guys. Okay.
so from tomorrow onwards what we will be doing is we will be learning about our pandas and numpy we will be starting to learn about pandas and numpy from right now from tomorrow and uh, any new topic that is coming for example we are encountering tuples we are encountering dictionaries while learning that we'll we'll learn it at that point of time itself so that we are able to start off with the advanced topics as well you don't need to worry about it i will try my best so that you are able to understand everything properly again i'm reminding you guys please do like the video it's really very important so that we are able to showcase that our community is growing and supporting us at the same point of time okay okay so thank you so much guys uh, thank you so much guys for the same okay we'll meet tomorrow again at the same timing and we'll continue with numpy and pandas so thank you so much guys thank you